What is good, y'all? It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing, and I'm showcasing you one of my favorite decks of all time. I love my princesses. Woo! They're so freaking savage, dude. They just murder people. Oh, like, underestimate my princesses. I'm gonna kill you. But this is an updated version, and I decided to incorporate one link monster, my Mrs. Radiant. Now, this monster is not legal yet. I do need to notify you guys that it is not legal yet. Don't tell me. I already know. I'm obviously not running this in tournaments or at locals at all. I literally just put it in my extra deck for the sake of this deck profile. Thank you very much. And I also would like to invite y'all to come down to Gerard's Card Gaming Shop. Great prices. In fact, most card shops sell above retail. They might sell a D barrier for 30 bucks. Like you're tripping, dude. Like you can go to certain card shops and they'll just be so overpriced. Like you, most people never buy cards from card shops. They try to trade in for value. Or, you know, when they top there at their local event, they use their card, you know, they, they use their store trading, um, I'm sorry, they use their store value or store credit to get cards. And most people never want to buy cards from card shops. If you go to Gerard's Gaming, you'll actually be intrigued and also you might actually be persuaded to buy some cards from them because they're so well priced. If this deep barrier, for example, was worth $5, Gerard's Gaming is going to sell it for 4 purposely because they want to beat all their competition. And retail is retail. Most people don't want to pay retail. You're not going to pay retail at Gerard's Card Gaming. And you'll have a blast there. You'll get to meet me. And it, it's it's slowly but surely becoming my locals. Out of all the card shops that I've been to, I've never found one like this. And that's why I keep telling you guys so much about it. Because this is a great card shop and I want to help it to get there. Because I feel like it deserves a lot more business. So you guys are going to help me to help them. Please and thank you. Without further ado, let's hop into this deck profile. Now... I've done a lot of deck profiles on my Prediction Princesses, so I'm not going to be extremely over thorough like I normally am, going in depth and detail. I've done that already, but I will tell you why I run what I run and how it works with other cards. Three copies of Terra Trey. This is a no-brainer. She is the steroids for flip effects, and every single in phase, you're going to gain free advantage off of her, especially summoning your flip effect monsters. She's got great recursion, and she helps to produce your field presence even further, and sometimes just lets you spam. Like, you'll set a flip monster, flip it right away, use this effect, special another one, bam, 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 bam. Core Normal is the example. Just really, really clutch. She's so broken. And, of course, her, basically, her partner in crime is part of the Forbidden. The ban list effects are real. Part of the Forbidden is used the best in this deck because of how you can re recycle him from the graveyard, trigger his effect more than once, flip him face up, flip him face down, flip him face up. Flip him face down. Use it. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, just so broken. Uh, the effect that I use the most is just draw two. I don't know why. I just love drawing. But he can destroy all monsters your opponent controls. He can bounce all your opponent's spells and traps. He can look at your opponent's entire hand, every single card in it, and then choose one of them that you want, shuffle it to the deck. Bam. This guy gives you so much information going first. He's arguably the most broken card in this deck. And he's named part of the Forbidden of the, for a reason. I feel like this card should be Forbidden. But he actually has Forbidden effects on him. Cards that you can't use. Uh, but if you run part of the Forbidden, obviously you have access to banless effects. Including the Jar of Greed, which is my favorite one. Pot of Greed, I'm sorry. Pot of Greed, which is my favorite one. Terra Trey and Pot of Forbidden are my go-to setup board. Um, once you tribute Pot of Forbidden to summon Terra Trey, in phase, she's going to special summon him anyways. She'll automatically get your Pot of Forbidden every time you make Terra Trey. And you don't even need an extra deck to do that. So it's really, really broken. Love the way they flow. Disruption on your opponent's turn by using Terra Trade to flip this guy and do what you want to do. Even if it's looking at your opponent's hand, knowing that he just searched that diagram, you know, use that search that masterpiece off a diagram. Uh, you can use Terra Trade before he tries to summon it to flip him and look at your opponent's hand, shuffle masterpiece back into the deck. This deck can just win just using probably the Forbidden wins you duels. Uh, these are the boss monsters. Now, everything from this point on is just going to be engines. Funny thing, Terra Trade's an engine in herself. She's a flip effect engine. Another funny thing is Pilot Forbidden's an engine in the form that he draws two cards, letting you dig dig thinner, uh, dig thinner, further into your deck and deck thinning. And everything else is engines as well. Three Spirits of the Fall Wind, she's a flip effect searcher. When you normally summon her, you search for any flip effect monster. She also happens to be Wind, which helps you to go into one of my favorite Shred All Fusions. We also play three copies of Koi Fish. Or, or Koi Norma. Let me check my camera. Good, good, good. Uh, three Koi Norma. So basically, these three, these six monsters do the same thing. Get you to any flip effect monster. She gets it from deck to hand. She gets it from deck to field. So sometimes Koi Norma is more broken when you don't have Pilot Forbidden. You can just special summon him from your deck off of Koi Norma, which is really broken. Oh, my bad. I just dropped the card. 
which is really broken because Coin Norma is actually searchable. So your pot of the forbidden is searchable through so many different ways. Uh, you you basically have twelve ways to get to pot, and you have the two pots. You have fourteen, which is really really broken. I love it so much. But yeah, these get you to any flip effect monster. It even helps your shit off fusion place. And Coin Norma is just such a great floater because she has no restrictions. So when you flip her, you can special summon Coin Norma, flip her, special summon Coin Norma, and survive from three different attacks and then still in on a pot of the forbidden. Next turn, flip him, destroy all their monsters. You survived an OTK and reestablish your field presence. Coin Norma is really, really broken. I'm surprised she never got touched on the ban list, but I guess. People just don't run the decks that I run or run them the way I run them. So those are your flip effect searchers or this is your engine for flip effects. I'm going to leave them right here where you can see them because next up is the Shadows. And the Shadows are basically the main focus of this deck. You're trying to get Terra Trade but the Shadows are like these stars because they do what they do. And this is Prediction Princess Shadows and there are some duels where I actually just play Shadows and don't ever even get the chance to summon my Terra Trade because I just killed them too fast. So we're playing three copies of Beast. I want to maximize on this guy. In fact, I wanted to run the most shit offs that I possibly can in this deck that were actually good. So three Beasts is a no-brainer. Uh, he's really broken in this deck because you can just reflip him, set him face down, flip him again, and just keep drawing. The draw power in this deck is insane. In tandem with Shed All Beast and Pot of the Forbidden, your two draw twos. Um, both of them letting you draw two. And um, also, you know, whenever he discards, if it's a Shed All, you'll trigger that effect, which is pretty broken. So Beast is awesome. There were some times when I actually sent a specific Shadow to the graveyard off of his draw to, dis draw to discard just in order to special summon it from the grave off of Terra Trade. That way I don't basically lose that card that I gave up for Beast. Um, so yeah, three Beasts and also three Hedgehog, the searcher of the deck. He either searches a Shadow Monster or a Shadow Spell or Trap depending on the way you use him. Um, I do, I, I actually, shout outs to Philip Martinez. I'm glad that I just remember that because he gave me one of my shut off fusions. He gave me my third shut off fusion. I met him at my DNA's low, uh, DNA's this Monday, this past Monday. I met him and he told me he subscribed to my channel. He's been watching my deck profiles. He gave me a shut off fusion. Shout out to Philip Martinez. Dude, you're awesome. I hope you're watching this deck profile. Um, cause you guys do mean a lot to me. I hope you don't just think I look at you as like numbers. Like, no, you guys are all people and you're awesome. You're my subscribers, man. I love you guys and I hope you love me too. But yeah, shout outs to Philip cause he helped and contributed to this deck. Um, but anyways, three shit all hedgehog, the searcher of the deck. This is a no brainer. No brainer. You want to play this guy at three. And we also play two copies of shit all Squamata. Squamata is basically any shit all effect you want him to be. Um, two copy, uh, two copies of shit all Falco. I love using Prediction Princess Terra Trey to special summon Falco, and then Falco to special summon another one. Um, so Terra Trey and Falco just keeps you in that recovery thing. It's just like you never run out of resources and you continue to recover from grind game situations where your opponent just blew you out and you're trying to come back. And Terra Trey and Falco definitely get you there. So this deck is so well balanced because it has a great balance ratio on effects that let you draw, effects that let you search, effects that recover, you know, recovery from the graveyard, and even removal. You have spot on removal with Skomata, you have spot on removal with Dragon, you have removal with uh, Pot of the Forbidden, and you have disruption in the form of Terra Trait, and you also have all the effects of the Shed Off Fusions. So this deck is just so consistent and powerful. I think it's one of the most broken decks in the game right now. Especially us being in link format, the fact that it just completely ignores that and doesn't really need to spam from the extra deck. It's a totally main deck thing. Uh, you can even just set your shit offs and just play shit off and use Terra Trait to just keep flipping them and send them face down to keep abusing their effects. For example, you can set Dragon, flip him, bounce a, uh, bounce a monster or a spell or trap, he bounces any card. Then, you know, on your opponent's turn, Terra Trait, flip him face down. And then, you know, he'll get flipped face up again, bounce another card. Just really, really cool how uh, Prediction Princess Terra Trait actually just makes your shed -offs just boost their plays, makes them run a lot faster. And she's basically just steroids for the deck. Uh, so, yeah, that sums up the shed -offs. I actually play 11. And uh, that will sum up the monster count. The shed -offs, I look at them as an engine because Beast deck thins, Hedgehog deck thins, um, and even Squamata deck thins, uh, Falco and Dragon are the only cards that don't get you other cards, but even Falco actually special summons the monsters that deck thins, so you could technically say he deck thins, and Dragon's just that, that guy that's just really, you know, he's worth it, you, you just definitely have to play Dragon, and even these, uh, the Terra Trade, I'm sorry, the Core Norma's deck thins, she specials from deck, she's a searcher, she deck thins, your Pot of the Forbidden deck thins, and also your Terra Trade deck thins, because she makes anything that deck thins run faster, 
She immediately flips Pile of Forbidden, which lets you draw two. And she even special summons your deck dinners from the graveyard. So just so consistent. Consistency, consistency. That's This deck is just really, really good. It, it just it doesn't run out of plays. It has so many alternative ways to win. It's so versatile. D-Barrier is such a waste of a card in this deck. Don't ever, ever activate D-Barrier. I can fuse XYZ, Synchro, and I can Link. And I can Ritual, obviously, so it's broken. Three pre-preps to start up with the spells. Um, Pre-prep is just such a clutch card. It's my favorite spell. Um, I really hope that that zombie bandwagon hype does not ruin the love that I have for this card. Um, Konami, I really hope you guys understand how much I love this card and how I'm basically one of the only Yu-Gi-Oh players in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh that has played Rituals since 2001 and has loved Ritual decks since I started playing. Like, I feel like you guys made this card for me. Don't hit it on the ban list. Don't do that to me. You will lose a really, really great player. And Three Allure of Darkness. Now, this is the newest addition to my deck. I don't know why I was not playing Allures. Um, I don't have extra copies, so I actually had to take these three out of one of my decks. That was one of the reasons. But another reason was just, I don't know why. <laughs> Bro, I just, I'm sitting here like, it's a no-brainer. I play Shadows. I have 11 Darks. It's easy to get them from my deck to my hand. Because if I have an Allure, and if I have a Spirit of the Fallen, I can normal summon her, search her Shadow, and then there's your Allure target, and Allure it away. It's a no-brainer, because I think I actually have... um. Three, five, and even balance. I have 11 non shadows being the um, three terror traits, the three spirits, the three uh, prediction princesses, and then the two pot forbiddens. Then I have 11 shadows. So it's like an even balance. Everything's perfect in this deck. So a lot of darkness should have been a no brainer for me. Um, I recommend if you guys were net decking me, update your deck list and put three of Lord Darkness in it because it just boosts the consistency of the deck. Increases your ceiling. I may have to put a Levier the Sea Dragon in my extra deck just so I can allure Darkness the Shadal and then Levier special summon it back. And then fuse using the Levier and the Shadal to make Windigo, which is the Wind Fusion. That's a combo that I actually came up with the lore. And uh, you, uh, while I'm talking, I'm just going to do it. I know we're in the middle of a deck profile, but I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to grab my Levier the Sea Dragon and just toss it in my extra deck. Like, what the heck? Why not? You know, I mean, it's there. So moving forward with the spells. Three copies of Prediction uh, prediction Ritual. This is so broken. It's such a broken spell. It not only summons Terra Trade, but it has no restriction to the level. So you contribute as many monsters as you want. Sometimes when I have too many Shadows in my hand, this spell becomes a freaking weapon. Like, let's say I have like a Dragon. I have a Skomata. And I have a Hedgehog, right? And I'm like, you know what? I can't get rid of all of these. I don't have a Shadow Fusion. This is your other outlet. You can play Prediction Ritual. Tributing all three of these to summon Terra Trade. And then their effects go off in the chain links that you want because they're all going off at once. And yes, it is by a card effect because ritual is not a cost. <laughs> you guys are talking to the ritual master. I know ritual rulings like no other. Ritual summoning is not a cost. So you are sending them to the grave by a card effect and not a cost. So you'll actually get their effects off in the grave, which is really freaking broken because you set up the chain links. And basically, you're going to guarantee whatever you want. And it's just so clutch. So Prediction Ritual is more broken because it just does, like I said, it does that. When I have too many shutoffs in hand and I want to pop off a bunch of effects at once and overwhelm my opponent, I'll tribute these and summon Terra Trade and then get their effects off. And I can even chain Terra Trade's actual effect. Oh, it's just so broken. Three Prediction Rituals because it also, from Grave, you can banish it to search a Coin Norma or another Terra Trade. So it's a very consistent ritual spell. Um, we're also playing three copies of Shutoff Fusion. Uh, okay, you guys can see. So the third shit off fusion came from Philip Martinez. Shout out to you, bro. You helped me because originally I was playing two shit off fusions for the longest. I wanted the third, but I just was really lazy with picking it up, and I finally have three shit off fusions. Finally, this deck is lit, so lit. Especially playing in links format, where link decks are gonna be a thing. Especially World Chalice and Firewall Turbo. Firewall Dragon Turbo going second. You can just play shit off fusion, make your Shiki Naga. And now, if they try to activate Firewall Dragon's effect, Shiki Naga will negate it. So, Shadow Fusion going second is just a blowout against that deck. Because you're going to guarantee your plays, your field presence. So you can make your territory not worrying about them, you know, bouncing it. Because Shiki Naga will negate Firewall Dragon's effect using her own effect. And you're going to get a Shadow in your hand because you can send Hedgehog and the Earth that you need to summon Shiki Naga. Shadow Fusion is just such a powerful card. The only deck that's not good going second against is what? True Dracos. And that's not the only deck in the world. Uh, one El Shadow Fusion, it's at one for a reason. OTK potential is real. Um, so that will sum up basically the engine cards of my deck. Um, and everything that doesn't search, no, I'm sorry, everything does search. 
Because um, even the shit off fusions, they search because you can send Hedgehog off of them. And this becomes a, a plus one. Because you can send Hedgehog and Beast. Get your search that replaces this card and your draw. And you still get that free fusion. So it's really, really consistent. And of course, Prediction Ritual actually searches. Allure draws and Pre-Prep searches. So all your spells are pretty consistent. And uh, the, the non-engine spells are two My Body is a Shield and two Forbidden Chalice. These are my main deck uh, masterpiece outs. Everybody trips tri tributes True King's Return and also the monster like Knuckles, you know, the Knuckles that activated it to summon Masterpiece. And then, you know, I'm just going to chain my body's a shield to Masterpiece's effect to kill him. Or I can chain Forbidden Chalice just to negate his effect and then just kill him with the card effect that he's not unaffected by anymore because his effects are negated. Um, so these are my four main deck um, Masterpiece outs. Now, if obviously, if Masterpiece is not unaffected by, if he's unaffected by spells, you can kill him with Solemn Strikes, which is really cool. Um, but I actually took the Solemn Strikes out of this deck just for the time being because I'm trying to do something funny, uh, something funny and funky at the same time with my strikes. Um, but we're also playing three copies of Shadow Games. This trap wins you games. It really does. Shadow Games is the most versatile card in my deck. It's just, it wins you games. It's so freaking good. This card should have been at one a long time ago, and it's not once per turn. There's nowhere on this card deck that says you can only activate one. Shadow Games is broken. I maximize on it. And now one Shadow Core to sum up the main deck. Shadow Core is broken. It actually is a free level 9 for your Calamities plays and also free Fusion Fodder. Um, y'all stay tuned for an update on this deck that I'm going to do True Draco Shadows. Uh, y'all stay tuned for that. I think True Draco Shadows is so broken. Um, that's going to be variation number 8 on the True Dracos that I told you guys, you know, I'm going to do 12 different ways to play True Dracos. 9 of the 12 are undiscovered and they came from my brain and no one else's brain. So you guys will definitely get to see that. I just asked in return, show some love to my channel because you guys have definitely seen some surprising stuff that you just can't find it anywhere else except here. Which makes Team King of Games such a unique team because of our innovation. You guys have seen my homeboy Eric. He made a Wind Witch, Red Resonator, Star Seraph super quantum deck i mean that was just crazy i'm like dude you're such a genius and that's why he's on my team because he thinks crazy like me my homeboy eric makes the most broken spiral builds ever you guys have to see his spiral deck i think he runs spirals better than anybody i know and of course his side frames like we just do such crazy things i'm not the only one with a crazy mad genius you know kind of brain like Everybody on Team King of Games is creative and innovative, and they all think differently. We all have unique minds, so I just definitely think that's something incredible about my team that, you know, everybody here is such a genius, and you can only find stuff like that on this channel, um, which makes us, again, unique, so y'all show some love. One misses Radius, just because you can make it. Um, this deck never really needed to spam from the extra deck, especially because most of the time you have Winda, um, but it's here, just in case. Triple Winda, this is a no-brainer. We are in Link format now. Um, every deck that's not True Dracos is going to need to special summon. I always mention True Draco because you always have that one douchebag watching the video that's going to say uh, True Dracos is a special summon. Like we didn't know that. And uh, even so, they can't use Return's Effect to special from Grave. So that's just food for thought. Uh, but anyways, Winda just kills Lynx. Literally kills him because Lynx have to have at least two monsters in order to Lynx summon. Uh, unless, you know, there's some broken Link monster that says just one monster. Um, which, even so, you summon that one Link monster, that's your only special summon. Um, but what I'm saying is, you know, Mrs. Radiant, for example, in Zodiacs, they really have to special summon more than once just to get this out. And once they get this out, obviously they're trying to special summon more because they want to use these, these two zones to have Zodiac Dryden and also Digusto Emerald in both these slots for their combo. Winda kills that. Uh, you can try to whip tail it away, but you're giving up so many resources. And all I'm going to do is just chain Forbidden Chalice in the damage step. And not only negate your effects, and you're not even going to get enough attack to get over window. Not only negate your effects, but just waste your resources. Um, that's another reason why Chalice is so good in this deck. Because of the stupid Zodiac Whip Tail, where they try to just, okay, I get one special summon. If I get rid of window, I can special again. So I'm going to use uh, Whip Tail, stack a, a Hammer Kong, and just try to attack window. You know, chain Chalice. What's up? Negate the effects. No Whip Tail. No Banish. Your monster still dies. You just, you lose. Uh, and Winda is just going to be broken for Firewall Dragon Turbo. Because if you go first and make Winda, they are not making a Firewall Dragon ever. Never. You, you just can't do it. Winda's just an MVP, bro. Like, she just kills so many decks. She even kills True King Yang Zings. She kills their combos. I know this because I play the deck. Three Windas. Uh, one Shiki Naga. One Annoy Attilis. Uh, this actually helps because, uh, you know, the True King's return specials from the graveyard. And there are just new, you know, staples like Time Space Transcendence. 
in the dinos and just different cards that actually you know special from grave so she's just something here um and she's also a level nine so i can fuse for her and then you know overlay her with my pot of the forbidden for true king of calamities detach pot of the forbidden for calamities effect and then in phase terra tray special summon pot of the forbidden and have terra tray pot of the forbidden and calamities which is really broken because pot of forbidden and terra tray are main deck monsters true king of calamities is your one extra deck monster so you're not breaking the rules um, she's she's clutch for that too. She just helps you to get into calamities also. So that's another benefit of her. And one Wendigo. Um, for the window Wendigo, you know, when you actually make your Mrs. Radiant, you can you know do that combo where you control window and Wendigo, and you just can't destroy window by battle with you know um anything now with with anything that's special summon now, which is really really cool. It's just something that I like to do. Um, obviously true Dracos have normal summon monsters, so that doesn't count. Um, and then Trishula. Uh, I pulled an extra Trishula, so I decided why not put it in the extra deck. Trish your opponent, make Calamities, why not? Funny thing, this deck does spam level 9, so I'm like, Calamities is a no-brainer. I may run 2 because there are often times when I've made the first Calamities, and I was able to make a second one. Uh, but Trish your opponent, make a Calamities after that, just make him cry. Omega, when he returns, he goes to the main monster zone, so he's really, really clutch. Great, uh, He's a great Synchro. Uh, Clear, Wings, uh, Clear Wings Synchro Dragon, uh, he's actually really, really good in the True Draco matchup. Uh, he, he just protects himself in so many different ways. He not only negates their effects, but he protects himself from being targeted, which is really cool. Coral Dragon and Samsara. She, this is just Monster Reborn, literally. That's what it is. Uh, True King of All Calamities, Artifact Durindal, and uh, Diamond Direwolf to sum up the extra deck. Um, these are all just so easy to make. You can make Rank Forest pretty easy. You obviously have Shut All Beast and Winda. Just overlay Winda and Shut All Beast. So that way you can special summon more because Winda restrict, uh, restricts everybody and Calamity is a no-brainer. So yeah, that definitely sums up the deck profile for now, you guys. I'm always doing some crazy stuff with this deck. So you guys can always expect new updates and new different ways to play Prediction Princess Shadals. I have loved this deck for so long. And before the Princesses came out, my Shadal deck was kind of boo-boo. Because I was just sad about Constructs. So I was just like, screw this deck. I don't want to play Shadals no more. But when the Prediction Princesses came out, I was like, dude... I'm playing Shadals again. <laughs> but yeah, God bless you guys. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Karthus must be destroyed. Y'all, make sure you feed your families. Pay your child support. Pay your bills on time. And next, we're showcasing the best deck in the world, which is obviously Herald of Perfection. So y'all stay tuned for that. Peace.